Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, we will discuss about decision statements in C. Now, what happens is every day, more often than not, we have to make several decisions. Actually, decision making is an integral part of our life. So every time we always face a situation in which we have to make some decision, a decision between whether to buy something or not, a decision uh, between whether to go somewhere or not and so on and so forth. So similarly, we also need to implement these things in our programming as well, because programming is all about modeling the real world. So that's why in this video, our goal is to learn about decision statements in C. Now C has three ways in which decision statements can be implemented. The first one is if else blocks. Second one is ternary operator. And third one is using the switch case. Now every method has its own advantages and disadvantages. But most of the time you will always see uh, if else or switch case getting used. Now you must be wondering, okay, if the three methods are all for decision making, then what's the difference between all the three methods? We could always have only one of them. Yes, there is obviously a uh, difference and hence that's uh, we have three, uh, you know, three methods by which you can perform decision making. So let us talk about the first one. The first one is the if else statement. If else. So what it means is if some condition is satisfied or if some expression is I mean evaluated to true, then do say X, otherwise do something else that is do Y. So that is what we have over here. See, this is syntax for an if else statement. If condition, then this is the body of if. Now there are three, three or four things to note over here. See. First of all, this if and the else, both of them are keywords. Okay. After that, whenever we specify this condition, this condition is inside a pair of parentheses, opening and closing parentheses. So this condition is placed immediately after the if. Once we place this condition, you will see the braces getting opened. So we open this braces in order to signify a new block. Just in case you have only one line inside the if body, you can always omit this, these braces. But then we use this to clearly, you know, distinguish between various blocks. It is always a good practice to use braces. So that's why we will use it over here. So over here we write the body of if. That means if some condition is evaluated to true, then there must be some set of tasks that the system must perform. So that is what we write over here. And if the condition evaluates to false, then this part is executed. That is the else part. So we begin this one with else. Just note that unlike in case of if we have not placed any kind of parenthesis over here, neither do we have any condition. Why is it so? This is so because Condition checking is done using if it is always this condition expression is always with if now if this condition is satisfied then something will be done otherwise this thing is done that means for all the cases where the condition does not satisfy this part of code will be executed and that is why we do not need to place any if over here but we have another variant see this variant shows that we can have if I mean we can have a if block inside one if block and similarly we can have another if block inside a else block likewise you can over here actually you can also have if up inside this if you have another if and you can always have a else over here to accompany this if yes one more thing that you need to note is that else is a you know not a mandatory thing you can always omit else it is optional you place else into your code only if it is necessary otherwise you can always omit it so that is why you will see over here that we have the if body over here but there is no else okay inside this first if similarly inside the else also you can have a if else statement 
and this nesting can be done to any level but then obviously it is not at all meaningful uh, if you if you you know like uh, you have say hundreds of if i mean hundreds of if else blocks inside one if else block it does not make the program it does not do any good to the program it just complicates it so that is why the maximum degree of you know uh, the maximum degree to which we nest some if else block or any any block is around 3 to 4 times beyond which we use some other techniques because the, our code becomes very unreadable okay so we have another if else uh, you know type over here you see we have if then there is a condition inside this condition if this condition is satisfied then inside this if there is a if body if this condition is not satisfied then we have one more condition so another checking will be done based on condition 2 so over here you see there's a else and to accompany to accompany this else there is an if so if the first condition is satisfied good this particular part will be executed if the first one is not satisfied then it will check the second condition if the second condition gets satisfied then this else if body will get executed otherwise if both the conditions both the first condition that is 1 and 2 fail then for any you know any other set of inputs this last part will get executed so that was about the if else statements we will obviously see the code but before going to the code let us discuss about the ternary operator the ternary in case of ternary operator we have three expressions okay there is the expression 1 expression 2 expression 3 now all the three expressions have their own significance this expression 1 is actually the expression corresponding to which the condition checking has to be done and the condition checking is done using this question mark and the set and the colon operators okay so this expression 1 it is this expression which will actually be evaluated to either true or false if the expression 1 evaluates to true then this expression 2 is executed and nothing is done with expression 3 otherwise if expression 1 becomes false then expression 2 is ignored and the last expression that is expression 3 is executed and one more thing see the value of so we have discussed more or less about this one let us see how the value is determined okay so the value of this question mark expression is determined as follows expression 1 is evaluated over here that i have already said this expression will be first evaluated if it is true then expression 2 is evaluated and becomes the value of the entire expression otherwise if exception uh, sorry if expression 1 is false then expression 3 is evaluated and it becomes the value of the entire expression and lastly we have one more type that is the switch case the switch case is actually named so because of its resemblance to the elect electrical switch see when we have electrical switch what we do it more or less i mean most of the switches have two operations either on or off so this idea of switch case has actually been derived from this electrical conducts okay so if you have a switch then the two states possible can be either on or off not but not both at the same time similarly in c programming also if uh, you know there is a case related to every switch so that particular case can assume only one value at a time obviously uh, you cannot assign two two or more values to a single variable similarly even that case will have only one unique value so the syntax of switch case is this switch is again a keyword switch this is the case and when this value of case is 1 some part of code will be executed if value of case is 2 then some other code will be executed when it is 3 some other code and so on and so forth so that was the syntax of the switch case statement now let us go to some program uh, but before going to the program let me just uh, let you know that switch case is generally used when we want to make some you know menu driven program switch games come becomes very handy in such situations where we have a menu and from within that menu the user has some choice to pick now let us go 
and do some coding. So first of all, we have this say if else. I've created a file named if else.c and I've saved that as well. So I'll keep the thing simple. Let us say we have two variables and a is equal to b. Sorry, a is equal to say seven and b is equal to say 10. Now we will write a small program to check uh, which number is greater. So if a is greater than b, I'll start, you know, notice this one, that uh, after this if statement, we have this expression. What is this expression? We need this expression to identify which number is greater. Okay, so that is our expression because a and b are the two numbers that we are having. Now see, I have opened this pair of braces. Inside this, I'll write, if a is, okay, if a is greater than b, then I can directly print it out that a say equal to percentage d is greater. And what was the value of a? The value of a was this. So inside this, I can have else. Again, notice the opening and the closing braces. So if the first condition is not satisfied, then it will go inside this else and the second condition will be checked or rather this else part will be executed. So B is equal to something is greater than this. Now see one more thing that can be done is if A is greater than B, then this is printed. If B is greater than A, then this is printed. But what if both the values are equal? That will obviously create some ambiguity and we do not have any case that sat that can satisfy that situation. So what I'll do is over here, I will include one more if. So else, okay. Here let's write else if B is greater than A, then print this is greater than this. And if none of the above two cases are satisfied, then what will we write? We'll directly write else print a and B are equal. Obviously, if A is not greater than B and B is also not greater than A, but both have certain value, then both need to be printed. And both the values of A and B can always be equal. There's no such exception. So let's save it and run it. So uh, most probably the output that will come out won't have any errors, but still, let's see. Okay, what's wrong? Oh yeah, I did not uh, place the semicolon here. So here is our program. See, B is equal to 10 is greater. Why is it greater? Because the comparison has been made between A and B. I mean, over here, if you see, B is equal to this is greater. So obviously this, this part of the code has been executed. Now let us just change the values to say 11. And now we will run the code. And this time, obviously, you can expect what the outcome will be. Over here, the outcome will be A is greater than something. So A is equal to 11 is greater. So that was the outcome that we actually wanted to get displayed. Now, this is the basic syntax of the if else statement. And over here, inside this thing, like in the query, uh, sorry, like in the presentation, what did we see? We saw that we can always have nested ifs. So the next nested if have or any kind of if else blocks share the same syntax. So whether I'm using it over here or whether I'm using it nested or whether I'm using it somewhere else. So the, set, so the meaning of this if else block remains the same. That does not change. Now we will take a look at one more pro problem. In that problem also, our goal is to, you know, find the maximum of maybe two or three numbers. So for that, we don't always need to complicate the stuff. So what we will use is, we will directly use the ternary operator. Uh, I had probably saved the file. Let's see. Or maybe we need to create one more. Okay, so I have this. Let's copy and paste some of the code. So void main so and so, A is equal to this and B is equal to this, okay. Now over here I will place this is our condition 
a greater than b now we will see whether this is true or not if it is true then we will print f a is equal to something and is greater so if a turns out to be greater than b then this part of the code will be executed otherwise if this value does not or if this expression does not evaluate to true then this part will be performed and this part says that b is equal to this is greater than b so let us try and compile it first we probably need to save it because this is not saved so let us say uh, ternary dot c save so once the compile is complete see a is equal to 11 is greater obviously because this a greater than b it evaluates the value to this so the value of a is 11 the value of b is 10 so if uh, this is a situation that means if a is greater than b then we will have this statement to get executed otherwise this one will be executed say suppose just to check let's write one over here and then we can close this we can close this also so when we run this b is equal to 10 is greater so over here obviously the value of b is greater than that of 1 so that is what we see now there is one more thing that is the switch case but switch case we will not see now because we won't be using it much when we use it i shall explain it to you and if we don't unfortunately if we don't use switch case right now what i'll do is i'll explain it right at the end when, where you will be able to understand it very nicely that what is the actual use of switch case statements okay so that will be all for this video thank you